My amplified unit, salute. Amped up with BC for Friday, October 18, 2024, hours before SmackDown. And we got a packed, stacked, jacked show for you today. I'm talking, we got the full SmackDown preview, or at least what we know as of now, hours before the big show. Not Paul White. The big SmackDown show, and this is big, just two weeks ahead of Crown Jewel. Um, But we do have the SmackDown preview And even though they are promoting it from South Carolina, something tells me everybody's taking a trip to Motor City. We'll explain in this preview. Also, WWE, man, I don't know if so far Netflix is helping WWE or hurting them. They gave them a lot of money, but it's almost like WWE is now their... Just say it, man. Wait till you hear what they're having WWE do next. I'm sure Nick Khan is probably fine with it, probably sees the upside to it. But there's a whole lot of downside. And we're going to talk about it in today's Amped Up. Um, also, um, we have the latest on Kevin Owens, and it pretty much looks like we have confirmation on who he actually signed with, WWE or AEW. Um, and especially with the storyline he's involved in right now, a lot of people think this is to write him off of TV. BC pretty much has confirmation now. We'll go over in today's Amped Up. And uh, AEW's rating. Man, if you guys saw NXT's rating, we talked about it in yesterday's Amped Up show. Uh, NXT, man, they lost over 200,000 viewers. And so this was finally the week where AEW, even though they're coming back from being out of their normal night and time slot last week. They were back in their normal night and time slot this week. And with how low NXT went, this was finally the week AEW can at least take that minor victory, right? At least get back over WWE's third brand in the numbers. However, did AEW Dynamite actually do that? That might be a horse of a different color and another story. We'll talk about it in today's Amped Up. And WWE, AEW, well... Pro wrestling right now is starting to get very political. This could get real dirty over the next few weeks before this big election. Um, We're not going to take a turn into the political world, but we are going to touch base on a couple of... uh, a couple of big stories that are out there, and you know, on Amped Up, we are not afraid to jump into those discussions, unlike anywhere else. We will actually get our hands dirty and talk about it. Batista had a lot to say. Undertaker is going to allow one of the candidates to speak what they have to say, and it's causing an uproar. But should it be? We'll talk about it, man. Pro wrestling starting to get political as things get really dirty. Uh, Here in the U.S. anyway. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. We ain't afraid to talk about this stuff. You know how we do. And what else, man? There's, yeah, there's uh, just a lot to go over. So I don't want to keep you guys here all day. Or else we're going to go head-to-head with SmackDown, right? It'll be a six-hour show today. (laughs) We're going head-to-head with the opening segments of Friday Night SmackDown. I want to get this out of the way right now with the rest of the time I have in the cold open teaser. All right, I know. You guys are going to let me have it with the Yankees. I know. It was a gut-wrenching loss last night. It was absolutely crushing. We are still trying to pick up the pieces, right, uh, of what is left from last night's loss. That's how bad uh, that was. Before we collapsed in the ninth and the 10th, we got to talk about the comeback. It was one of the biggest comebacks, or the best, I should say. One of the best that I've ever had the chance to witness. In the eighth inning, being down by two, it looks like we had zero offense. We were pretty much done. The game was over in the eighth. It was over in the fourth when you realize you had no offense. But in the eighth, Aaron Judge with a two-run blast to tie the game. And then John Carlos Stanton with the leading home run. To give the Yankees that lead. Back-to-back home runs catapulted the Yankees above Cleveland. All we had to do was send in our closer. Game done. And by the way, those two back-to-back home runs came off of one of the best relievers in the game today. Cleveland's closer. So then Weaver comes in. Our closer to get the job done. And he collapsed. Two runs right back to Cleveland and the game was tied and when it went to the 10th I knew we were done and when they sent in Clay Holmes to do the the dirty work Clay Holmes is just not what he used to be whatever that was 
I knew it was a recipe for disaster. Our momentum, our mojo was gone, and Clay Holmes is pitching. It's the 10th inning. It's in Cleveland. We were done. Sure enough, six minutes later, a two-run blast shot home run. Cleveland wins. Cleveland takes game three. Yankees are up two to one. Game four tonight against SmackDown. It'll be in prime time right after the Mets and the Dodgers, 8 p.m. Eastern time. So trust me, I know you're going to let BC have it on that. Cleveland took the W, a catastrophe loss for the Yankees. You are correct. It is gut-wrenching, which is probably why I'd rather talk pro wrestling right now if you don't mind. So a huge swig of my Dunkin' Extra Extra coffee taking you guys to the opening signature. Come on back. We're going to talk all things WWE, AEW, NXT, you name it. We'll talk it. Amped up with BC. Let's go. Ah, look at that, huh? Check it out. Check the merch. Rocky PC. Damn, that looks good. I'm not even sure they sell these hoodies on Teespring anymore. I'm not sure. Haven't checked in a minute, but I do know, thankfully, I grabbed about four or five of these when they first hit the sales line. Uh, You know, just for my own nostalgia purposes 50 years down the road, you know, very proud of what we've created on the channel and uh, to have, you know, the first few lines of merchandise come out. It was very cool. I wasn't expecting the merch to be as soft as it was. I put the price point a couple of dollars more so you guys would have the finest quality. I didn't know it would be that good to the point where I'm sporting my own merch. (laughs) You never want to be, you never want to be like the band that's on stage. And they're rocking out with their own t-shirts, their own merch on, right? I don't think you'd see Metallica rocking out with Metallica shirts. <laughs> or maybe, I don't know. I haven't seen Metallica in years. Maybe that's what they do now. Maybe it's uh, just self-promotion. I don't know. But for BC, they're, it's just soft. And no, Enzo, I'm not talking S-A-W-F-T, soft. I'm talking S-O-F-T. Summertime, wintertime, doesn't matter. These hoodies, the whole line of merch... The whole line of BC merch, man. Comfortable and cozy AF. You could go out, do errands with these hoodies in the summertime. You could sit on the couch in the wintertime, snuggle up watching your favorite television show, The Golden Girls, or whatever you watch. <laughs> and these hoodies are the they're the real deal, man. Anyway, what am I talking? I don't even know if they're still for sale on Teespring, so just, if not, then just be happy for BC. I got really comfortable hoodies. Um... I used to collect hoodies, by the way. True story. Collect them. Literally, Adidas was like massive when I was growing up and they had all these hoodies and I had like 150 hoodies. I don't know what it was. Hoodies. Like some people collect shoes and sneakers. Hoodies, man. I don't know what it was. Anyway, we're a little bit off track. It's the Amped Up Show with BC, man. I can go any direction that I want. Let's start off with SmackDown. Let's get into it. Because I do have a lot of stories I do want to get to, and I don't want any of these stories to get booted uh, because of time restraints. SmackDown tonight, it is October 18, 2024 from uh, South Carolina. However, we're going to feel like we've taken a trip to Motor City because the big storyline tonight is the debut of the Motor City Machine Guns, MCMG. Now... Monday Night Raw had the return of the War Raiders, right? Once the Viking Raiders. And now back to what they were in NXT, the War Raiders. So a lot of people are like, all right, this is a start. If we are going to have a reputable, prestigious tag division, you have to start somewhere. Bringing back the War Raiders is a step. Bringing in Motor City Machine Guns, another massive step tonight on SmackDown. But unless... Hunter Hearst Helmsley is going to put effort, resource, care into the tag division in totality. None of these teams will make a difference. Doesn't matter if it's two members of Wyatt Six, a couple of members of Alpha Academy, American Made, or the Creed Brothers, whatever you want to call them, Street Profits, a couple of members of Final Testament couple of members of Bloodline. It doesn't matter. There's all these great teams. The Gorillas of Destiny from the Bloodline, for instance. There's all these great teams. That's never been the issue. Bringing in all these teams and having great teams. That's 
That's never been an issue. The reason that BC and much of the community says that there is no real tag division is because there's no real tag division. (laughs) There's no cohesion within the division. Unless you have a foundation for all of these really good tag teams to grow from, you're just going to have really great tag teams having really good to even great wrestling matches. BC sounds pretty good. What's wrong with that? Well, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't move a needle. It doesn't become a headline. It makes the tag division actually irrelevant because all you're going to get is the same old really good wrestling matches on a wrestling show. Well, I would hope we would have that. (laughs) What else are you offering? There's no real good storylines. There's nothing that's going to captivate an audience to what you are doing because you have no direction. You have no good creative backing you. The tag division has become irrelevant. You guys know that. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. And if you want proof, it's in the pudding, right? Just look at the facts. How often are tag team titles, even on pay-per-views, guys? There's three sets of them. There's a woman's tag title, and there's two, two sets of dudes' tag titles, Raw and SmackDown. Most of the time, guys, they're just defended on the SmackDown before a PLE or the Raw after. That's it. They can't even get on the show, and these are titles, championships. So whether you call it subliminally or subconsciously or indirectly, your audience is taking inventory of that. Again, even if it is subconsciously, they're taking inventory. The company doesn't care about the tag division. Why should we? So bringing in all these different, right, giving the Vikings back their old name, the War Raiders, that's cool. Bringing in the Motor City Machine Guns, cool. The real test will see if Hunter Hearst Helmsley is finally going to dedicate the time, effort, and resource into making an actual division. Because having all these really good tag teams is only half of the equation. The other half is just as impactful and just as meaningful. Now you have to create the division, storylines, direction, purpose. These are all things you're going to have to show to your audience before they can finally come on board and say, hey, this is the best tag division we've had in years. Just having really good tag teams will not make an audience say that, or they can, they'd be fooling themselves. So that's the biggest issue, the biggest obstacle, I'll say, for MCMG, for the War Raiders, for the teams that have already been there, from the New Day to the Street Profits to the Testament to the Creed Brothers and everybody in between, Gorillas of Destiny. Everybody now has to hope that there's a real division, right? It's what DIY just said, Tommaso from DIY. He said, you know, holding the titles was such an achievement and losing it was so devastating. But the real next step isn't just holding titles. He said, I would like a real division. He goes, I want a prestigious division. So even the talent is hoping and asking that of Hunter Hearst Helmsley. It's not just podcasters or fans, right? Even the talent is telling you that's what they really hope for. Holding titles is nice, but Tommaso is telling you, I want a division. I want people to really look at the tag division and say, hey, this is legit. And for Tommaso to say that, it tells you that they know we're not there right now. These are huge first steps. War Raiders, Motor City, But what is next? That is what is the most important. What is Hunter going to do with all these teams? BC will be watching with a keen eye. and You guys will absolutely be dealt the truth every single review off of these shows. As I always say, sit back, max, relax, let BC drop the facts. So we'll see. That's the big talking point tonight. They are advertising Roman Reigns. We don't know if that's going to be in arena or just like a backstage thing. Maybe they filmed some stuff last week. Because there were conflicting reports that he was not going to be there, but he was advertised. Yeah, he has to be. Guys, you started this massive thing with Jimmy Uso. He shows up to Raw and he tries to get Jey Uso. And then all of a sudden, because Roman doesn't show up to work, you can't continue the storyline. Something big has to happen with the Bloodline story, man. You, You ignited it last week, right? You kicked it into another gear. Don't go backwards already. 
Because when you lose the fan interest this time, you might have lost it for good. Something massive has to happen with Roman, Jimmy, and the evolution of this storyline. Same thing with Cody Rhodes, I feel. Cody's taken on Gunther in a couple weeks at Crown Jewel Champion vs. Champion to get this weird third title called the Crown Jewel Championship, which is just a little asterisk uh, title, something to give you, you, you know this big show in Saudi, make it feel more special. So they're going to create this new championship, Gunther vs. Cody. Problem is, there's no story behind this. It's thrown together like Cody versus Owens recently, or Randy versus Gunther recently, and now Cody versus Gunther randomly. <laughs> I mean, Hunter Herzelmsley is throwing some main event randoms at us nonstop. That tells you this is day to day booking, hour by hour, basically. And it doesn't seem like Hunter has a path or a plan. And we pretty much know that, man. You saw the WrestleMania documentary, and Hunter's basically said, oh, I'm just winging it at this point, right? I mean, in a roundabout way, that's what Hunter was admitting. You know, what Hunter fails at big time is just long-term storytelling. He doesn't do that as good as he does his short-term. The problem is even his short-term is starting to lack tenfold. These are weird main events, man. Owens and Cody, I'm still befuddled by that. And that was a month or two ago, right? A month ago? I'm still befuddled by Gunther and Randy. And I'm just as befuddled with Cody and Gunther without a proper story. We all felt that was going to be a big matchup in the future, down the line, when you have a couple months, a couple two, three months up front for a real storyline when they're the same brand. We didn't think they were just going to rush it with three weeks to go before Crown Jewel just to have the match because it's Saudi. And we'll put a gimmick championship. And if you guys saw Raw on Monday, or you heard my spoilers the afternoon before Raw, because it was taped last week, Gunther and Cody shook hands, guys. They just showed mutual respect. That's the storyline. It's a good old-fashioned Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Let's see who the best truly is, right? It might as well just call this amateur wrestling. Wrestler A, Wrestler B, and they're going to have an athletic bout, and we're going to see who the best is, and then they're going to shake hands. There are no more heels. There's no more faces. Just have Wrestler A and Wrestler B put on an athletic contest. Let's have the crowd chant, this is awesome. We'll put five stars on it, and we'll say, hey, did you see him shake hands? We went from the Attitude Era to the Mutual Respect Era. Excuse me. A little nauseous. I think I may have to vomit. <laughs> pathetic come on man cody and gunther are shaking hands two weeks before crown jewel that's what's getting us excited to see cody and, and gunther what has happened to pro wrestling what has happened to ww where's the stories man the heels and the faces and the stories and the feuds man captivating our interest they shook hands so my point is tonight, just like the bloodline has to kick it to another gear tonight, Cody Rhodes and Gunther, they have to kick it to another gear. Gunther, Cody showed up to Raw to see Gunther. Gunther's got to show up to SmackDown. And tonight, there is no more shaking of the hands. Gunther's got to put Cody Rhodes, I don't know, powerbomb him off the loading dock through a car on the outside in the parking lot. Do that. <laughs> Run him over with a monster truck. <laughs> I don't know, man. Let's have some fun. Let's ignite this Cody gun. Let's start to captivate our interest. It's Cody versus Gunther. It's not even a talking point at this at this juncture. Literally, it's in none of the headlines. Gunther is about to take on Cody in two weeks. Nobody's talking about this. And then uh, also tonight, uh, the big story outside of Motor City is Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is giving WWE an ultimatum because ultimatum because Kevin Owens feels that WWE has silenced him. He has sent WWE uh, a, a video in response to why he attacked Cody, pretty much blaming Cody, I believe, for all of this. But WWE refuses to play that, I guess. So Owens is giving them until tonight's SmackDown or else he's going to release it, something like that. So Owens is, I know it's much different, so not exactly the same, but it's almost like what Mox is doing over in AEW, Owens is kind of going rogue over in WWE, and I feel it's the right person at the right time. The heel turn itself still doesn't make sense because Randy had to. So I know you're thinking, well, BC, Randy can still turn heel. The problem with that is it's going to be diluted. 
right? You diminish the effect that Randy's heel turn is going to have because we just saw Owen's heel turn. And you really want to set up Cody versus Randy Orton around WrestleMania. I don't know if you're going to get Rock and Cody one-on-one at Mania. I don't know. What would the better match be? That one or would it be Randy? And Either way, Randy and Cody have to face each other soon. I see Randy getting the title. There's no reason under the sun that Rock, not even part-time, but once every uh, year or two, at this point, he's going to come back. There's no reason for him to take the title off of Cody. It's got to be Randy Orton, if anybody. Or, I mean, would you have John Cena and Cody? Cody looks up to John. Could you imagine that? Then that's mutual respect that, I, that I'm on board with. And then all of a sudden, Cena breaks the Ric Flair's record by beating. That, that could be captivating. But my point is, you really want to get to Randy and Cody. Randy has to be the heel. He's the diabolical legend killer, the Viper. We haven't seen that character in years. He's been smoking dubs with, uh, with uh, Matt Riddle for a whole year plus. He's been playing the side chick to Cody and Kevin Owens for the past six months. We haven't seen that type of Randy Orton in a long time. He's got to be heel, the old teacher student. And Randy Orton, that's what really ignites the old school Randy Orton. But now that Kevin Owens turned heel, you got to hold off on Randy's heel turn. And that's why I'm befuddled by why they didn't just go with Randy. Unless, I brought this up last week in the review. What if, because something just doesn't seem right. The way that Randy and, and Owens were attacking, or Owens was attacking Randy, feels like Randy is like playing along. What if Randy is in cahoots with Owens? So then that would make sense. Randy's heel turn would be in conjunction with Owens. So then I'm on board with, because it makes sense. They both plan this against Code. I hope that makes sense. At least that, that is intriguing, I guess. Tonight will tell all, right? Tonight will t- After tonight's show and whatever they do with Owens, this will tell us if this is going to be an intriguing storyline going forward that we have questions we actually are excited to find out the answers to, or is this going to be one of those things that's already, the waters are muddied, and the only questions we have are not very interesting, right? We're not excited to ask them. <laughs> we're almost timid to ask them because we know the response. This leads to nothing. So we're hoping for the for the for the uh, first option. We're hoping that this is going to be you know done in the right way, and it's going to lead to really exciting questions that we actually want answers to. It has the potential. I'm befuddled by the heel turn if you're not going to turn Randy first, but what if they're in cahoots together? Kevin Owens is a big talking point for tonight. We'll see what they have planned. And then you have like, um, you know, all the little asterisks, you know, uh, nothing that's set for them, but they have to have something on tonight's show. Like, where's Giovanni Vinci? Where's Giovanni at? They made this big deal that he was coming back. Came back, lost a couple matches quickly to Apollo, and I mean quickly, like record time. And then he's just sitting at catering. And then he's told, just go home. We literally have nothing for you. We don't even have triple layered moose cake in catering for you anymore. Giovanni was told just to go home. Where's Giovanni? I'm not saying I need to see Giovanni on my two-hour Friday night show, but uh, it's now or never. It's sink or swim. You got to do something. Same thing with Chelsea Green. After a couple weeks ago having that dumpster match in the world of pro wrestling going, hey, that wasn't that wasn't that bad. Right? It's a gimmick match. It's a dumpster match. You're, you're rolling your eyes. You're going, what is this? This is Vince McMahon booking, right? But Chelsea Green, man, she went all out. She's in there doing Canadian Destroyer. She's getting powerbombed through tables, through the dumpster. I mean, Chelsea Green is showing you how good she is. She checks off every box. And it's time to do something with that. Chelsea Green's got to be utilized tonight. Or are they just going to have this weird tag match with her and Piper against the champions, Belair and Jade, just to give Jade and Belair another notch W at the expense of Chelsea and Piper? Because it looks like that's all they're doing if you saw Raw's setup. And by the way, Be- by the way Belair... Okay, I understand you want to kind of help out Jade Cargill, just like Natty always had to do back in the day for rookies coming in, just like they had Asuka do while she was champion. Asuka had to hold the hand of Lana, and they're having Belair hold the hand of Jade to kind of, you know, lead the way, because Jade is still green, and they want Belair to be that mentor. But there comes a time where Belair is being held down because of this, and if you're going to make him lose the titles... Not long after they won it, just because you were in Scotland to Alba and Isla, 
well, then the tag team itself lost all credibility. And if you think that W's over Legend and Jackson from NXT is going to get that momentum and lightning in a bottle back, no, you didn't read the room properly. So it's getting to the point where Jade and Bianca have to feel or do more things to feel more special. Or Belair's going to have to cut ties and go her separate way. That's just a side note. But uh, Chelsea Green and, and Piper, it looks like they're just going to be another notch in the belt of Belair and Jade. Um, who else? Logan Paul, man. Crown Jewel's coming up in a couple weeks. This is usually where you see people like Logan Paul come into play with the two weeks. Can Logan Paul get a match for that card? So we're going to find out tonight. It's Logan Paul or no Logan Paul. It'll be announced tonight. Logan Paul has been mentioning a lot more about WWE, talking about people he'd like to face. So a lot of people think like, all right, we'll find out tonight. Probably hear something about Logan Paul. If not, he's going to be off the show for sure. So that's pretty much your preview, guys. I'll just leave it at that. There's other talking points, of course, as well. But that's that's the big stuff. The Kevin Owens story. Motor City coming in for the tag division. Um, you know, we got to find out what they're going to have planned for the bloodline and what they have planned for Cody Rhodes. Are we going to see something special for Chelsea? Are we even going to see Giovanni? Um, what do they have for LA Knight? It's usually just the same cast of characters, man. LA Knight, Apollo or Apollo, Andrade, LA Knight, Andrade, Melo. There you go. Or Santos. And they just switch off with one another, right? We've seen Andrade and Melo have 165 matchups. I think they're going to go tonight again. They're calling it match seven, but I counted 165. <laughs> then you see LA Knight versus Santos or LA Knight versus Melo. Are they the only mid card you have on the blue brand? So I'm sure all four of them in some way will be mixed up with one another as well. But that's your SmackDown preview. BC will do his due diligence. I'll be catching the show, rocking out the notes. Tomorrow's Amped Up. Um, the biggest portion of tomorrow's Amped Up with BC will be dedicated to SmackDown, the full review. So make sure you guys check it out. Not just subscribe, but make sure you're notified. Do all the things you guys know. Um, Where do you want to go next? That's it for SmackDown. We'll leave it at that. Um, oh, we'll stick with Kevin Owens, actually. This is a big story, actually. Kevin Owens, salute to him. A big deal. We are now damn near confirming, all right? Not officially, all right, until it's actually made official by one of the two parties, WWE or Owens, or a very reputable outside source that's been triple verified. But BC can damn near confirm now that Kevin Owens has signed with WWE, re-signed with WWE. Um, this was a big talking point. A lot of people thought there was a good chance. Good friends with the Young Bucks and many other individuals. Jericho, of course, over in AEW. Um, a lot of people thought that was possible. Um, but we are hearing that big talks never really were had. And he kind of had his mind made up from the jump that he was always going to stick WWE. That's the word that we're getting. Again, that's word. Uh, maybe one day, I don't know, maybe Owens will you know, speak on that a little bit more. But that's what we were hearing, that Owens had already made up his mind. It was just about dotting the I's, crossing the T's, coming to the final financial number. And it's signed. Kevin Owens staying with WWE. So that's big. And because of that, you can really catapult the story tonight. You don't have to worry about just writing this dude off of television. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, what about the rating for Dynamite? I can't believe this, man. Back in the normal night and time slot. Well, I can believe it, I guess. I guess I didn't want to. And I really want to get behind the mock storyline. And I'm really hoping for AEW success. I know a lot of people are dogging that promotion these days. And that seems to be the thing to do. But if they can you know, get successful, it's better for the wrestling industry, man. It's better for all of us, the fans. If you can put the tribalism aside... You want the best for everybody. Competition would be really good between WWE and AEW if it can ever get to that point. But this number, damn, that's probably not going to get them to that status. Um, AEW this week pulled in. Well, first, let me tell you NXT's number. 
this week. NXT pulled 639,000 viewers, 639K. They fell over 200,000 viewers from last week. This is only their third week on the CW, and they fell to 639. So a lot of individuals thought, BC included, I thought this was the week AEW can beat them, not easily, because their new normal is in the six to seven. They're they're struggling to get 700,000 viewers these days, all elite wrestling. But you thought they would beat 639 back in their normal night and time slot. Guys, could they beat 639? AEW pulled 633. So they actually lost again to NXT by 6,000 viewers. So as low as NXT dropped to 639, AEW was even lower, 633. Up from 329 last week, which of course was not on their normal night, head-to-head with NXT. But Tony Khan did theme that, right? Title Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Didn't do anything, though. 329. Um, and then 633 this year. If you guys are wondering, that is down from their 690 average, which is sad in its own right, that their new average is 690. But this is nearly 60,000, even less than that. And even more unsettling is the fact that last year's average at this exact time was 875K. This year, at this exact time, their new average after this past week is 650. 875 last year, 650 this year. Over 225,000 viewer drop is their new average. And you saw that steady decline by the, by the year, by the month. And we were talking about it, right? We talked metrics, numbers, statistics, this is the, the type of channel, this is the type of show, the Amped Up show, where we, we don't just talk about what happened in the ring or, or just review shows. I mean, we talk about the behind the scenes and all the stories and all the news that's breaking. You know, we tackle all areas of wrestling, so we talk about the numbers. And we saw this happening, just like I called it with Raw, and I told you, even with NFL football gone off the airwaves for the season the season is done no football competition i told you guys wwe is going to be pulling one six averages one five and sure enough when football went off the air what was their average guys they were hovering one sixes again or one sixes up front so with or without football my point is wwe raw has sunk to about a one five as an average now And I told you this was happening because we watched the trajectory, right? That's what I'm saying. Sit back, max, relax, let BC drop the facts. I don't give opinions. Those are like a-holes. Everybody's got one. They're usually full of... You guys know how that works, man. I don't care about my own opinion most of the time. So when you talk about the facts, though, we can help save something or help something up front to prevent it. That's why I was raising the red flag for WWE Raw and AEW Dynamite. Wave the red flag and let them know, hey, you guys got to fix this. You're sinking to a point where it's going to be hard to get those viewers back because now you're losing your niche audience. Forget not, not getting newer fans. You're starting to lose the niche. So that's where AEW is now, man. A 650 as an average. And now it's becoming a normal thing that NXT is beating them. So that's alarming. Now, some people say now it's on free TV, the CW. So, of course, they're going to beat them. But, guys, it's the same number that they were pulling with USA. I, I think it's just the same audience. I'm not seeing any... The last two weeks, you could say that definitely, right? The eight semod. So it looks like they got a two to 250,000 viewer increase by being on CW. You could absolutely say that. But this 639 that NXT pulled looks to be the, their niche or their core audience. So what we're starting to see is the NXT core audience is starting to bare minimum match AEW's core audience and now most weeks even beating them. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. So that's all I'll do with the uh, ratings and numbers talk. I know that's, it's not everybody's cup of coffee, but it, numbers tell in, in, in structured metrics and statistics, they tell a story. They have a trajectory. And because of that, it is important to talk about them. So AEW uh, fell to a six or went up from last week, I should say, but fell in their averages. Um, Monthly average and then year to year average both fell to 650. 
Um, where do we go now? Oh, listen to this one, man. Netflix. I know they gave WWE a ton of money, but are they starting to become a detriment to WWE? So, Netflix, we already know that they put Hunter Hearst Helmsley and WWE in such a bad light. Um, you, you have this big deal coming up, right? WWE is going to debut Monday Night Raw on, the, on I almost said USA, on Netflix starting in January. So, September is really when you want to start promoting that, right? That's called Sweep Weeks. Sweep Weeks, I can speak. More coffee, BC. Sweep Weeks for all the networks, broadcast, cable, streaming even, right? It's where you really want to get in front of everybody and tell them about all your new shows, the new lineup coming in for the rest of fall into winter, and even next year, spring, summer. So September is really where you want to get all your powers that be, your big wigs in front of the cameras and in front of everybody and telling about your lineup. So what did Netflix do? They, instead of putting the focus on Raw debuting in January on Netflix, they started talking about the Mr. McMahon doc. That's going to debut in September, a few weeks ago. And so that made everybody in WWE, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, have to answer those questions about this big documentary coming up about his father-in-law. And we know that it's not all going to be hunky-dory with what's going on now with VKM. So if you've noticed, Hunter hasn't been doing a lot of interviews lately. Ever since the announcement and ever since that documentary debuted on Netflix, you haven't seen a lot of Hunter Hearst Helmsley interviews like he has been doing the past year up front. That's by design. He doesn't want to answer any of that. It put Hunter in a really bad light, a really bad way, right? Now he can't even talk or promote WWE Raw on Netflix. So that was the first dirty. And now what they have him doing is another behind the scenes documentary that's in the works. It's being planned right now. Netflix is pretty much demanding it. Nick Khan is going along with it. And this is going to be a behind the scenes doc. The question is, how much more behind the scenes can they go? They've already pulled back, peeled back the curtain as much as possible, you would think. They're literally documentaries like WrestleMania's where it's telling you step by step what went into the booking of the match. All of the inner workings exposing the magic tricks. How much more can you peel back the curtain? How much more behind the scenes can they get, man, before you're absolutely just taking a piss in a sh- on kayfabe? There has to be a semblance of kayfabe alive if wrestling is going to survive. And then eventually, hopefully, we can get to a point where it's thriving, not just surviving. But wrestling right now is hurting because kayfabe is constantly being pissed on. At some point, we have to stop with all the behind the scenes and everybody, even the wrestlers, after a really good storyline, they can't help themselves. They go on social media two hours later and they start talking about what went into the storyline. Dude, you're in it. Let us enjoy it and be invested by it and be captivated by it. Don't tell us the magic tricks. (sighs) Netflix. And now we're hearing it could be like a... um, like for developmental, like following some of the careers of some hopefuls, right? So I guess that would be a little less, or or should I say a little bit more of a no harm, no foul scenario. But they just have to be careful. Netflix is already starting to exploit this. And you kind of figure that would happen when you pay them $5 billion. You know, Netflix is going to ask for a lot and if the stream, you guys think that the, the ratings are going to end because it's on streaming now in January. Oh, uh, no more ratings talk. If you think streaming numbers aren't even bigger and more of a, a, a big topic of debate for all streamers, not just Netflix, the numbers that they are pulling in in streaming hours are, it's everything for streaming services. Netflix is absolutely 24-7 going to be checking out those streaming numbers and making sure WWE is carrying their own weight. For five billion bucks, you're damn, damn straight they're going to do that. And they should. But it's almost like now they're just going to make WWE do every little thing and suck every little ounce of WWE and what they have to offer. They're going to suck that out of them. And that could be detrimental to the WWE business model. To those suits and ties, straight down to the fans and what we're consuming. Hope that all makes sense, man. 
They're asking a lot already, and I can't say that all this is, is best for business, especially when ratings for the actual product are down. And they want more, more, more behind the scenes, more documentaries, more peeling back the curtain. I think that's what helped get us to this point where numbers are so low is because all the magic tricks are exposed. What's left? Bring back some semblance of kayfabe, man. Netflix, man. (laughs) They're asking a lot from WWE. Now the question is, is it too much? Um, where do you guys want to go, man? Oh, what do you want to talk about? Uh, oh, what about this? Uh, uh, we're pressed with time. Do we have time for this? Let's do it. Why, why not, right? WWE stars getting political, man. Past stars, I should say now, right? Past stars. Batista. Batista went nuts recently, man. He's on like a little tirade. Um, it's safe to say that Batista's not a big Don Trump fan, so <laughs> Batista Batista is going off on like the Jimmy Kimmel shows, on his social doohickey, uh, Batista, he's sporting the merch uh, for, who is it, Harris, so Batista is like giving no Fs, man, and he's going hard on Don Trump, I think he called him like a whiny little bitch. And he he said he's a fake tough guy and just going off on all this low hanging fruit, which and and I don't mean this politically, whichever side you're on is the side you're on. Salute. Much respect. But fake tough guy. I mean, the dude just got shot at and stopped his Secret Service on stage and raised up his. I mean, that was pretty badass. I do have to say (laughs) I'm just saying, man. He raised his fist in assurance and defiance, right? Assurance to the crowd at hand that all is good and into defiance. And he raised that fist. I mean, whether you're for him or against him, that's pretty badass. That's pretty tough. So I don't know if Batista thinks that tough is bouncing at bars like when he grew up. But dude, BC was 15 years old throwing adults out of bar room windows. That's a true story. That's how I grew up. Throwing adults through bar room windows. That didn't make me tough. That made me a dumbass. And looking back at it, I was a dumbass because all I did was I fought a lot. And I thought I was a tough guy. No. No, that was, uh, that was ab- absolutely buffoonery by BC. So I don't know what Batista thinks, right? Just because he was you know, he was throwing people around bar rooms, or you know, he like BC likes to hit the gym, getting strong now. Old school Rocky, uh, just because we got you know big muscles, that doesn't make us tough, man. How you act in situations, how you present yourself, how you carry yourself. You know, that's that's what it is. So again, not in a political way, whichever you guys are on, whatever side, salute. But I mean, what is Batista talking about, man? We're weird stuff. Some people take it to another. Let's relax, bro. Relax. I mean, what did Don, did Don Trump do something to Batista and he just didn't get over it? <laughs> Uh, on the flip side, Undertaker Mark Calloway is catching a lot of heat because he's allowing Don Trump onto his show. He's got like a podcast or something like that. I don't know. I never heard of it, but Undertaker is a pretty uh, captivating dude. So all the best to him and, and most success with what he's doing. But he's catching flack because I guess there are plans to invite Don Trump onto his show. And if anything has to do with Don Trump, man, there's an uproar, right? How dare you! Mark Calloway is just like, what are you I'm fucking bringing the dude on the show? Harris can come on too, right? Logan Paul did that. Logan Paul had Don Trump and he got absolutely just destroyed for just allowing Don Trump on his show. So Logan said, Harris can come on too, <laughs> right? I'm pretty sure Calloway will allow her on too. Um, she just doesn't like to do interviews from what I've seen. She just did one with Fox, but that wasn't an interview. Because to be in an interview, you have to actually answer questions. I don't think she does that, but that's a, that's another story, man. <laughs> that's another story. Um, Mark Calloway, man, uh, he's gonna have Don Trump on, and that's just gonna be the, the Trump a media brother, like Hulk Hogan. He caught a lot of flack because he has endorsed Trump. So uh, you're starting to see a lot of the, uh, the 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 wrestling business is gonna s- start to take this on a little bit more. 
The real interesting question is going to be if it leaks into the locker room now, the current wrestlers. That's when it's going to get to a, to a sticky situation, right? And it's clutch time with this election with a few weeks left. So it could leak into the actual locker room with the wrestlers now because you're starting to see the veterans that a lot of these youngsters look up to. They're opening up, whether it's a Hogan or a Batista or an Undertaker, Mark Calloway. They're not staying silent on it. We already know Kane, man, how Kane feels. Um, Jim Cornette has made it abundantly clear. <laughs> Jim Cornette. He wakes up every morning. What? Trump. <laughs> Screw Trump. Jim Cornette. I don't know, man. Again, Don Trump did something to Jim Cornette. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> he was funny. <laughs> He's a Hall of Famer, too. I don't know if you guys know this, man. Don Trump is a WWE Hall of Famer. Vince was asked several times to take him out, and he was like, Screw yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I always, dude, I always say, respect it. Whatever side you're on, man, respect. Yeah, just come to your decision, you know, with facts to back them up, and your feeling. Um, you're feeling just wholeheartedly into that decision. And you know what? Nobody can sway you, man. Do what you got to do. Vote how you want to vote. And that's, that's your thing, you know? But, uh, man, people just hear somebody's going on a talk show. What? Screw you, Undertaker. I always hated you. What? Just, what? Stop. It's still the Undertaker, bro. Um, so we'll leave it at that, man. We'll leave it at that. Um, until next time. And there will be that next time. It'll be tomorrow. Smackdown's review. Let's do this. Hopefully it's a really good show. It has to be a really good show, man. There's two weeks before Crown Jewel. You have to present a really good show tonight. And BC will be walk watching with due diligence, taking my notes on it. And tomorrow the review for this Smackdown. So make sure you're subbed and notified. We're going to rock this out big time, man. It's going to be a big amped up tomorrow to really ignite the weekend. So until then, man, BC in the unit saying check you. Salud.